We are having Daniel Wang from Taiko. So it's so nice to meet you. So could you briefly introduce yourself and sure. say hello to our viewers? Sure, sure. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Daniel Wang. Um, I uh, joined crypto back in uh, 2013. Uh, my first project was called Loopring. And now I'm uh, working as the uh, co-founder and CEO. Of I'm from a technical background. So before I joined crypto, I uh, worked for uh, Google as a um, software engineer. And then I uh, also worked uh, for uh, a few Chinese uh, companies uh, as their like the director of engineering. So basically, uh, engineer background. Uh, yeah, that's about me. <laughs> Okay, cool. So, how is Taiko positioning itself within the blockchain ecosystem? Mm. And what unique value does it bring compared to other solutions? Well, I guess um, Taiko is unique uh, in that we, we want to make sure we scale, help Ethereum to scale, um, but we don't want to sacrifice uh, security or um, the permissionless nature of the mm -hmm. blockchain. Because if you use Ethereum uh, to build apps, nobody can actually censor you, right? It's really hard. It, it was, it, it's probably incorrect to say impossible, but it's uh, very hard. And, um, you know, but uh, if we look at all the existing layer tools, uh, most of them, uh, except Taiko, is, uh, is, uh, they are centralized. So I feel like uh, we need to scale Ethereum the right way. And I feel like the, the, the current approach that we are taking it's the right approach. Yeah. So we are the first base rollup. So you can use Taiko to anyone can propose blocks with Taiko. Um, so I think it's uh, one of its kind. It's the first the base rollup. But it, I, it, I think in maybe uh, two or three years, there will be more base rollup coming out, um, hopefully inspired by uh, our idea. Okay. So base rollups cannot build blocks as fast as centralized layer twos and so leading to longer wait time for users, right? right? So how does Taiko plan to address this user experience issue? That's a really nice, nice question. Um, so we are actually working with Ethereum Foundation researchers and the other uh, partners to uh, offer something we call pre-confirmation. So basically, currently we need to propose block every like 30 seconds to make sure a user feels like, hey, my transaction has been included into blocks um, and feel the liveness of the blockchain. But uh, pre-confirmation will allow us to give like free confirmation even before their transactions are included in blocks. And then the, um, the benefit of that is we can only um, you know, propose blocks when necessary. So we don't want to propose blocks as frequently as we do now. 30 seconds seems like... Uh, slow but we want to make it even slower we want to propose block whenever we feel like you know the there are enough transactions or uh, some uh, other conditions are met for example i have to propose block because my slot um, is is going away in the look ahead so indeed base rollup does have this problem right now but uh, pre-confirmation will not only improve the user experience with uh, less than one second pre-confirmation, it will also reduce the cost because the cost is also higher right now, but it will be lower. It will be potentially even lower than centralized sequencer rollout because they have to propose block every like two seconds, three seconds, right? Um, so um, there are also ways of uh, resources in uh, uh, their end. So what we are doing is try to optimize user experience and in the same time, we also want to minimize the cost on chains. So we are op optimistic. We, we, I think we can deliver pre-confirmation in about a year uh, with uh, help and uh, support from Zero Foundation and other partners. Yeah. So that will be, the problem will be solved. So Taiko is really like frequently mentioned in the announcement of Ethereum's public return and gained a lot of like uh, attentions. So what do you think um, the reason of this interest? Um, I think it's probably because um, our approach is highly aligned with Ethereum's vision of um, roll-up scaling. I, I think uh, Ethereum also want to see roll-ups that are decentralized, permissionless, ownerless, you know, and, and, and scale, right? So um, this, this base rollup idea, this name, this term is actually 
uh, from uh, Justin Drake, a Ethereum uh, well-known like researcher. And I think they the reason they want to uh, invest their time in researching this area is because you know it's um, Ethereum's vision of scaling mm. as layer tools, right? So I, I'm honored to be mentioned by, by Vitalik. Um, but I think uh, we just need to deliver to make sure you know we can solve the current problems of base rollups. Mm. As I said, the pre-confirmation, a few other uh, you know priorities we have. Um, so hopefully in one, in one year, Tyco will be different yeah, in a good way. Yeah. And the Tyco has exceeded 110 million transactions and attracted like around like many, a lot of numbers of unique wallet addresses and over 100 dApps in just 90, 90 days was um, mainnet launch. So what are the Tyco's key achievements following its mainnet launch? Um, Myself, I, I focus on technology, mm -hmm. you know, the solution itself. I, I really don't want to, uh, don't spend time on ecosystem building. Um, but I think our ecosystem team has done a great job to acquire users, to acquire developers, to try our uh, technology. Um, so we uh, achieved quite some like small operational milestones, like the number of transactions, um, uh, TVL and uh, you know uh, DApps, etc. Uh, but in terms of technology, I think the post mainnet we become truly permissionless. Mm -hmm. So when we launch the mainnet for about two weeks, only we can build new blocks. But now anyone can build blocks. Anyone can prove blocks. So it's truly permissionless. But this is only like one step uh, for us. We have a few major milestones ahead of us, and if we can achieve all those milestones. As I said, Taiko will be different, and uh, I think people will be will like Taiko even more, right? So yeah, it takes time. I mean, the, the engineering team they, they need time to build cool stuff. Yeah. So recently, Taiko Taiko held a big airdrop event called Trailblazers, and I noticed there are like many projects being building on Taiko. Mm -hmm. So are there any other or onboarding project? that you are particularly interested in? Oh, the, uh, the Trailblazer is actually a, a two to three years continuous airdrop of a token to users, to developers, to make sure they want to invest time deploying their app into our uh, layer two. So um, it's, a, it's a bootstrapping um, you know, design uh, a campaign. In terms of like the category of apps, we don't really have a strong preference. We welcome all type of um, apps to be deployed on Tyco. Uh, but uh, given that we are permissionless and we are going even ownerless, I hope uh, going forward the like uh, gaming, decentralized social network, you know, DeFi, they all come to, to Tyco, especially decentralized social network. I really hope that uh, we as uh, Web3 developers collaboratively can build truly decentralized social network. Not some social network that you have to you know, uh, offer a URL to visit, right? It's not really uh, decentralized. Mm -hmm. It's still owned by someone, but just use the, uh, the blockchain technology. But I hope, you know, the social networks can be uh, censorship resistant. Nobody can shut it down. You can access, you can say anything you want, but this is not possible um, with the current technology. Um, but hopefully uh, very soon, uh, when Taco has pre-confirmation, when Taco has, um, um, becomes ownerless and uh, with uh, a ZK proof covering all the blocks, a decentralized social network will be possible on layer twos. Yeah. And we know that um, Taiko does listed on many huge exchanges, including L Bank. So, and have achieved so many great figures in 90 days after your main launch. So, can you share your any updates or upcoming events? Like my upcoming milestone that token holders can expect in the oh, future? That's, that's a good question. So we have, I would say, four major technical milestones we want to achieve. The first one I mentioned multiple times, we, mm -hmm. we want to launch a DAO, Taiko DAO, so that Taiko, the chain, is not going to be controlled or owned by us. Yeah, we are entity, we are a group of people. And uh, my, my philosophy is you should never trust us, a group of people, right? Because that's why we need to have blockchain. So the first milestone is achieve the DAO governance, decentralized governance through the DAO. Uh, so the token holder will be the owner. Mm -hmm. We don't control anything. We should not have any power 
or backdoor to control anything, right? So that's the first milestone. The second milestone is uh, zero knowledge proof coverage. So right now we, we are testing zero knowledge proof in our testnet. So we are going to gradually increase the percentage of uh, blocks uh, proven by ZK uh, over the next uh, maybe one year or two. And eventually we want to make sure all the blocks are ZK proven. This is probably, the, this is the second one. The third one, uh, I would say the uh, pre-confirmation is very important. Uh, in terms of uh, user experience, in terms of uh, cost of um, operation. So that's something we need to work with others, not just by ourselves, mm -hmm. to, to achieve. The last one is something even cooler. Um, internally, we call it um, a synchronized, synchronizable or a synchronized controllability. Um, so our CTO, Brad, is leading an independent engineering team to work on that. Uh, hopefully later this year or early next year, we can launch a uh, test net to use that technology. And then eventually, maybe end of next year, we can launch a, another main Yeah, so our goal, our plan is to launch two main nets uh, with the same token, uh, with the same DAO, so that we can use the current main net because it's more mature, it's more ready for production use. And the... Um, the other test net we call it Winnie's. This network is, is it, it, it has featured, it will enable people to build like cross chain apps without realizing they are cross chain, right? So, if that's possible, then I would say you know, that the bootstrapping period is going to be much shorter because we can just access all the data, liquidity, for example. Uh, on L1, we don't have to say, hey, come to layer two, deposit your token on layer two to build a um, AI or something. Everything on layer one can be accessible from day one when we launch the network. So that's something cool, but it's, it takes time to build, you know, cool stuff. Um, I think this this idea, we previously call it a uh, booster roller. Uh, this idea has been embraced even by other projects, right? So hopefully we can find partners to work with to maybe build a standard or uh, submit new like EIPs to make sure this uh, booster rollup idea can be uh, natively supported by Ethereum. Uh, we are still, you know, maybe a year from, from that. So hopefully that EIP can be like a prioritized by the Ethereum Foundation. Yeah, so maybe it's, these four milestones are they are my priority. Yeah. Four good uses coming up. Yeah. Okay, so then what significance does Korean market have for Taiko? Oh, uh, the Korean market is my favorite market. Um, we have really, really uh, good partners here. Uh, we enjoy the event. Uh, I think um, we, we also found really good like researchers here to take into base rollup. I have never expected that. But the, the you know the, their output, their research paper is really, really of high quality. So I strongly recommend people who are interested in base rollup to read that research paper. Uh, we will probably also publish the paper with our partners later, maybe maybe later this week. Um, because so many people are asking me, hey, why don't you give me a presentation to talk about base rollup? We want to learn about base rollup. Um, but base rollup is it's not a, like an invention from us, right? It's, we just use the idea, we just adopt the idea. Um, so if I strongly recommend people who, who, who want to learn based rollup to read the paper from uh, four pillars, uh, a Korean research mm -hmm. uh, team. So yeah, so, so we are going to uh, spend more time in Korea. We are going to deliver more um, real time like uh, uh, update to Korean market to make sure uh, investors and partners, they are informed. Um, we, we want to be more like transparent and open uh, um, to communication uh, because I, I realized you know the Korean market they they embrace new ideas mm -hmm. innovative ideas and uh, they deserve um, more information um, to make their right decision so yeah so very very nice people mm -hmm. okay to close our in the interviews do you have any message to convey our viewers um so we are also going to uh, events uh, in, in um, Singapore and then later uh, Thailand. So if people are interested in Taiko, they can find our people in Singapore, in Thailand um, during those events. So we, we welcome people to um, come to our booth and then come to our party, have some fun together. Okay, I will look forward to it. <laughs> Thank you. So up, up till now, we had um, Daniel from Taiko. Thank you for today's Thank interview. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Sucks really nice. Oh,